five athletes who have made a billion dollars. Tiger Woods, Floyd Mayweather, LeBron James, Ronaldo, and I think Michael Jordan, maybe Messi. So that might be six. I think it's five. Um, and now Federer is in that club. So how does this work? So he, he has the same thing where, okay, he's had a great career, right? Considered, I think, the GOAT in terms of tennis tennis players. So he's, he's the greatest tennis player of all time, but less than basically 90% of his money came not from winning tennis tournaments. So he he's made 130-ish million dollars from official prize money from tournaments. Um, and he's got 20 Grand Slam wins, but most of the money he makes is off the court. So just for example, like- Is he retired? Yeah, so Roger Federer, who just announced literally yesterday that he's retiring, you know, in his last year, he made like, I don't know, 300,000 of prize money, but 90 million from sponsorships off uh, off the court. What? Uh, off the court, which is kind of insane. But his story is kind of cool. Like, And when I was studying these different athletes, I'm actually going to do a whole episode that's just a deep dive on each of these athletes, the moves that they made that made this happen. So one of Federer's big moves was that early on he was not getting paid jack shit even when he was the best player um they you know they would pay like andy roddick more because they're like oh andy roddick he's american america's a bigger market federer swiss uh oh, the swiss market you know that's the tiny population he's kind of this like clean cut sort of boring guy he doesn't have this big personality um and even though he's really good he's not as marketable he's not as sellable and this is what they used to tell him so he was getting like very small like nike was paying andy roddick more than they were paying roger federer even though by the way there was no rank number one that's the guy who married brooklyn Decker. Oh yeah, yeah. Andy Roddick. That's right. Damn, missed that um, one. So, uh, so anyway, so Federer goes and he's like, he's making, so he's making like very little money from Nike. Then he, you know, he carries on and he goes and he gets to a ten million dollar uh, a year deal with Nike. And it's sort of like, well, you made it. You know, you should be happy. You got this ten million dollar a year deal. You know, you're set. Your your family's set. Whatever. But he made two decisions, which uh, really one decision led to two things that made him an extra six hundred million dollars. And here's what those two were. So the first is his contract with Nike is coming up. And the expectation is that he's going to uh, just renew with Nike. And he goes to Nike, he says, hey, this is now or I'm then the, this is back then. He's like, I'm one of the, uh, you know, I'm one of the best uh, tennis players in the world. Like, you know, what can you do for me? And they're like, Raj, we, we, we put so much marketing behind you. Uh, you know, the reality is you can't compare yourself to basketball players or to, uh, or to um, soccer players. Like, you know, tennis is just a different thing. Here's the best we could do. And they gave him a deal. And the deal was basically like every year that you're playing, you get X amount of money and he's and you know something similar to what he was making right then but he starts he decides you know what i'm gonna pause here i'm not just gonna take this deal i'm gonna go shop around a little bit more and see what i can do and then uniqlo comes at him with this crazy offer and so uniqlo who's not even in the like sports apparel game really but they kind of had this like tennis vibe they're trying to come they're trying to come to the west and um and so uniqlo comes at him and they offer him a 10-year deal worth 300 million dollars that that pays him even when he retired so this is 2018 he's retired now um I think he's retired now. Let's check that. But he, he is retired now, right, guys? Um, but basically, he uh, he signs this deal knowing that he will retire during this deal and he's going to get paid $30 million a year uh, doing this. He goes back to Nike. He tells Nike, hey, guys, I got this offer. Can you also give me an offer like this? It doesn't even have to be as much. And they're like, uh, no, we'll, we'll throw in this, like, you know, here's an extra free T-shirt, but, you know, yeah. no, no, you're not getting a new deal. Give you a parking So spot. he's like, all right, he leaves. But there's one key thing that he kind of knew here, which was that Uniqlo doesn't make shoes. And so he signs the Uniqlo deal. He starts wearing Uniqlo, but he's still wearing Nike shoes. And they ask him at the press conference, they're like, Roger, uh, I noticed you're still wearing your Nikes. Like, are you allowed to do it? He's like, oh yeah, I don't have a deal with them. Um, you know, I, I'm shopping around. Let's see what's out there for me. Uh, you know, it's exciting. I want to see, see what's out there. And so for three years, he keeps wearing Nikes essentially for free because he's just playing in them. He doesn't have a shoe deal. And then finally he gets, he does a shoe deal with the brand called On Running, which I'm guessing you know about yeah. On, the, the running brand. They're, they're, uh, also they're another Swiss, Swiss company. Brand. Yeah. They're, they, yep, they, they're, they take, kind of take the world by storm and you know what's funny is they were one of our advertisers when we first started and they started spending a little bit of money and their spend kept going up each year and i was like you guys are killing it aren't you and they are i think they make like over a billion in revenue now or maybe they even sold did they sell no they went public so so they went public at its peak it was like 11 billion dollar valuation now with uh, with the market correction it's back closer to six billion uh but at the you know at its peak Ro so roger owned three percent of the brand in exchange for he did an equity deal so he said all right i get it you guys don't have the same cash that these guys can offer how about a piece of the company? And so he owns 3% of the company at its peak. His stake is worth $300 million now. So that's sort of like bet on yourself and then do an equity deal. Don't
don't don't trade dollars for time, you know, trade your brand for shares, trade it for equity. And that becomes worth $300 million. And then he says, all right, what else can I do? So he then takes matters into his own hands. He cuts ties with his current representation company, starts his own player management firm to represent him and other players. Then he starts creating his own tournament. So he's got his own like, you know, cup that's basically like, you know, the equivalent of the Ryder Cup in golf where it's like Europe versus America. Uh, so he wants to do the same thing. And so now he's got his own competition thing. And so he's built this whole empire made over a billion dollars total, most of it, 90% of it off the court.